Hi there. This video will give you a brief introduction on how to use uh, Eggfoil. So first, you need to download Eggfoil. Okay, here you have the link. Also, in the video description, I will give you a link. And depending on your patent system, you will need to download one version. Also, you can download the, the source code. Assuming that you are all using uh, Windows, you should click here and download the, the application. It's a very small program, okay? So you have Mac. You can download here, click there, uh, here actually. And uh, I don't know if it would work with the latest version. Also, I don't know if it worked with Apple, uh, Apple Silicon processor. So it's up to you to test that one. But assuming that everybody's using Windows, click there and you will download the software. So when you download the library, you can put that whatever you want. So here I put it in the clean one. I put it in the desktop. So you have this zip file and then you extract everything and you get this, okay, very small program. Okay, so we're going to focus in Netfold in this one. Then here you have the source code for those a little bit more curious, you, you can read the source code there. So I will go here and we'll open this folder that I have in my desktop. It's that original installation, but also have some additional files. Okay, so in the video description, also you will have the link to download this one. These are additional air files that you can load in in Eggfold and some sample output files, okay, from the from from our studies. Okay, so to launch Eggfold, uh, by the way, the source code you have here, so here I extracted and see that this is just this, you want to read the implementation. There is a very interesting file, this one that is kind of a documentation that you have there. So if you are curious, you, you can read it. Okay, so pure text file and open it and read it. So to launch Eggfold, Okay, click there and you have this this screen. Okay, there is no graphical user interface and actually we don't need it. So don't complain about that. So one thing that you get here, uh, I don't recommend you to maximize everything like this. Just leave it like that. So make it a little bit larger. So always remember that you have we have a common line interface. So you have the prompt here that is waiting for you to give an input. So to get instructions or help, just question mark. Okay enter and you have that so see that here we have a basic you node know, to help all the commands that we can find so something just to clarify here for instance when you see here this upper with a dot means that there is a soup menu okay so you can enter to another menu okay you type upper and you enter to and you will have some options okay in this case see that you don't have any options option this one will take options options and so on also, when you see an F means that it will generate, it needs a file or we will output a file, okay? A text file, an input file, okay? Then I is integer, it will take an integer. R is a real number. And S is a string, okay? It's a text, okay? So that does those sort of symbols. So first we need to read uh, an airfall, okay? So we can read it for an external file or using a, a generate airfall generator that comes with uh, with Eggfoil. I will show you uh, the airfall generator that comes with Eggfoil. So this is the command, NACA. And then you just type NACA. By the way, it's case insensitive. It doesn't matter if you put in capital or small, so it will, will understand the same. Now I can then see that it, it will take, it can generate NACA four digits or five digits. It's up to you. So I would generate a four digit 2412. Okay. And that's all. So see that it's giving you some information. Okay. It's telling you that generate this one, this basic geometry information. And see that it's still wearing this menu, for the main menu. So if I type question mark there, again, we get a help. And now that we have an airfoil in memory, and remember that we're using a panel method that we need to, con we can control that panel in. There is another option here called PPAR. Okay. So see the show chance panel in. So I type PPAR. I don't need to put the, the dot. The point means that it's a, there is a sub menu. And see that we enter in PPAR, it will open this graphical window, okay? Leave it there, okay? Uh, you cannot close it as well, as well so leave it there. It does, doesn't, doesn't do any damage. See that it's giving you some basic information and see that these are the panels. So now we're going to add the sources there and then compute the circulation and so on, okay? So here also, again, you question mark, you're going to get 
the actions. Okay, so see here that you can control, for instance, the strange uh, stretching, bunching parameter, all that stuff. No, how you are clustering the panels. So I'm not going into details. You can play with those options there. So the only one that I'm going to play here is with this one, number of panels. So here you can change it. You type n. And it's going to ask you see that it's an integer okay it's not a real integer so how many panels do you want so you can put 100 to thousand whatever usually in the panel method we don't need to put thousands of panels so i would say that probably no more uh, no more that, than 300 panels okay so in this case 160 usually uh act for what it proposed as default values are okay but if you want to change uh, this up to you but don't put more than 300 okay so i will change it here i would put 120 panels See that I press enter again, and now see that has been updated 120. So I'm happy with this. Okay, remember where it's still in this PPAR menu. So if you want to go back to the uh, main menu, Eggfold, you need to press enter and see that always read the prone. So see that here we are in the main menu. Okay, so see that at this point we have an error file we need to run no, our analysis. So there are different analysis modes. We're going to focus in this video in this one, upper direct operating points, okay? So as you type there, upper, it's, it's going to enter to another submenu, okay, subdirector, with more options. So see that you have here, upper I, okay? Question mark, and there you have all the options, okay? I'm not going to address all options, just the most important, but I think they are self-explanatory, okay? And always also remember that you have also that small documentation. You can see what is happening there. So what is important that when you are in Opera, you see that you have Opera. By the way, if you want to go back to the main menu, enter, and you are back. Okay. So that is the way how you change the directories. So you are in Opera. See this I that you have there. Always pay attention to what you have there. This I that you have there means that you are working in visit mode. Okay. So see that as you go here, you have options to change. So you have this option and you can change between in basic and viscous mode. Okay, so always pay attention. But for the moment, I want to run a small analysis at a given angle of attack of this airfoil. So I will run in the visit and see that I want to run, change the alpha. So you can ch choose alpha or a target CL. Okay, so I will say alpha zero degrees. Alpha, enter and see that it's waiting for the value. It's a real number, so it can be 2.13, 14, whatever. Okay, so I will put zero, and that's all. Now you go here in the screen and you have the information, okay? So you have CP distribution over the airfoil, okay? This is in this case. Remember that this one is okay, but if you go to 2030, we'll always predict that it's producing more leaves, so be careful if you want to use to predict a stall and that stuff, you should change to the viscous correction, okay? Later we're going to do that. But he, see here that you have the basic information. Uh, also be careful, pay attention to the y-axis, okay? In this y-axis, is it, it, the uh, axis is reversed, okay? Sometimes people don't pay attention to this one. So here you have your distribution and of CP over the surface. So if you want to run for a different alpha, alpha force and that's all it's super fast okay so the other option is cl okay cl means that you want to reach a given uh lift coefficient in our case is in visit so we use cli so let's say that i want to find the angle for which i have zero lift so i say here see that it's asking you in basic lift coefficient zero and now this is your solution okay so see cl zero is you have it and something about minus 2.11. Okay, so this is the basic in basic computation. So we are more interested in the viscous one, okay? Adding over this panel solution, we're going to add a correction, no? a, a viscous correction. You have more information in the in the in the documentation, no? in the in the source code that that dot file, but also in, in the slides. The course size you are going to find a little bit more information and references to the original paper. Uh, so to change to viscous mode, you have the suction bisque. So remember that this is almost self-explanatory. Okay, you see the description and you're going to know what is happening. Okay, so I would change to viscous mode, bisque, and see that now it's going to ask me Reynolds number. Okay, so uh, remember that in stern aerodynamics or in aeronautics, don't be afraid of high, high Reynolds number, okay? 
Reynolds numbers here is 1 million, 2 million, 5, 10 million. Okay, don't be afraid of those Reynolds numbers. So I'm going to run for a Reynolds number of 1 million. Put it there, and that's all. See that also can ask, you can give the Mac number. So you type, and you can give your Mac number. Okay, so you put zero means that is, you are not adding compressibility corrections. You put a value, it's going to add some compressibility correction. It's up to you, be careful that usually Mac number more than 0 0.5, uh, 0, 0.5, Eggfold is not going to give you accurate results, okay? but but just because you, you you are reaching now the critical Mac number. So for our proposal for the moment, Mac zero, and that's all, okay? Reynolds, you tie, you have one million, okay? Let me show it over there. And we can run as we did previously, okay? So I can say alpha zero, and see that this is the solution. So you see here the, the dashed line that is in basic solution, and also you have superimposed the viscous solution, the color line. So. Here you have yellow upper surface, blue bottom surface. Okay, so extra dose, intra dose, or some people also may, mainly tubo machinery, uh, suction side, pressure side. Okay, so here you have your distribution. Okay, so now this distribution is with the correction of the boundary layer. So you see here that kind of you see a boundary layer here, and you have your values here. So you have CL, CN, CD, lift to drag ratio. And this is a, a critical amplification factor for the transition model. Also pay, pay attention that here in the output screen, you get this some information as well, a little bit more information than you have here. So importance is that you get here. So you get the same co co coefficients, but it, what is important that CD here also, you, you get the breakdown into viscous, uh, viscous friction and pressure drag. Okay, so you get this breakdown here. So this is total and you see the breakdown here. And then you have this information here, very important. This is telling you where you have the transition point in percentage of the airfoil core. Okay, so here is about 60, 65% of the airfoil core. You have the transition from, from laminar to turbulent and same here, okay? So that is the information that you have here. So I run at alpha zero. Let's say that I want to run now alpha eight Okay, you can put everything in a single line or alpha and then eight, okay, it doesn't matter. See that you run and see what is happening here. You have to be very careful, okay? So usually it converts fast, okay? But sometimes it might happen this, that does not converge and you get this message, okay? So when it doesn't converge, you, keep, you need to, to keep iterating, okay? It uses an iterating method, okay, for the viscous, uh, bond, uh, viscous correction, okay, with the boundary layer correction, okay? So, method based, based in the Newton method, okay, for linearization and that stuff. So here it's not converged, you need to iterate more. So see here is you always look at the windows here, it's telling you that exclamation point, you can iterate, do 10 more iterations, okay? But sometimes that is a little bit annoying that you have a maximum of, of 10 iterations. So this value, you can change it, the number of iterations. And I always recommend you, okay, you have this option here, iter, that you can change the iteration limit. So I always recommend you to increase that to something about 100, okay, it's okay. So see that now I change it, and I will go and run again alpha 8, and see that in 19 iterations, and you have a solution, okay, so alpha 8. So you have to be careful with that number of iterations. You need to increase it, but if you want to increase it, just exclamation point, and it keeps iterating. So again, you have all your values here, okay. So now, what is interesting that this is an iterative method, okay? It needs to take an initial and starting solution, okay? To keep, to, to start iterating. And usually that starting solution corresponds to what you compute in your first you know, analysis. So just to explain that again, so there is an option called init, okay? So see here, initialization flag, okay? You are initializing your boundary layer. So I will initialize, initialize that. And if I run alpha, usually we run the, the first computation, alpha zero, see that it's very stable, okay? And then, for instance, if we go to alpha 10, see that it's going to take longer to initialize and sometimes it might not converge because to run at 10 is using as a, as a starting solution, no, that as zero. So it's too much difference. So it's recommended to do everything in small steps, okay? so. 
Again, if I go here, I do alpha zero, then alpha two, alpha four, and so on. So do it a small test because a new, your new simulation will use the previous one, okay? So for instance, now I go alpha 10, it will take longer, but it's fast. But now if I go alpha minus eight, there are completely different solutions. So it might take longer, might diverge or might not converge. So be careful. See that in this case it's taking more. So it's not recommended to have those large differences. Okay. So that's all here. So in it, okay, I go alpha zero and that's all. Okay. Interesting things to mention here that you see this small bump here. This corresponds to the transition point here. Okay. So as we saw in the lectures, that can be controlled also with the transition point. So the other thing that I want to show that we have seen that we can do single single simulations. Okay, so single line, but usually we want to plot the, the polars. Okay, so for instance, stuff like that. No, you can do this plot. So you need to run many simulations. So you need to save that information. So you have seen probably that you can run, run manually and then just write down this information. I know in a, your notebook or you know, a text file so but that is not very efficient so what we can do we can do things automatically okay so as you go here you see that you have another option called ac asec and csex okay this is a sequence of angle of attack a sequence of cl number okay so as you run this one you we're going to do everything automatically so okay so let me initialize everything okay I will run alpha zero to have a good solution there. And now I can go as sequence and I can say, okay, first value of angle. So I will say from zero, last one, 25. And see that increment one degree or 0 0.5. Okay, it's up to you. Usually the steps of one is fine. And then see that is running everything that you have here. Or your value. So see that here probably some cases it was having uh, problems converging. Okay, so if it doesn't converge, it's not going to save the information here in this table. So probably some, it's difficult to read, but see that in this table, th this can be saved in text format and then you can use any software to plot it. Okay, but see that you have here alpha, CL, CN, CD, a moment coefficient, and this is the uh, transition point top and bottom surface. Okay. So this is how you run, okay? But for instance, you want to save this file, this information. So at this point, we don't have any, any information saved. We're running in memory, okay? So to save information, we need to, to, to use something that is called polar accumulation mode, okay? So polar accumulation mode means that, see that you have the option here, PAC, whatever you run is being, being saved in memory, and then you can use it to plot directly here in egg file or you can save it in a text file okay so let's do it so i type p a c c by the way before entering into to polar accumulation mode you have to be sure that you have the right reynolds number and mac number because you cannot change that information anymore inside polar accumulation mode so in this case i'm happy with my reynolds and my mac number so i will enter i'm in viscous mode and see when you enter polar accumulation mode it's going to ask you is you want to save this information in a file okay so if you want to save it just give it a name any name by the way don't put a spaces in the names just everything you know, together so in this case i will say i will save it test one dot that so everything that i'm going to do is going to be safe here and then here you have this dump file so usually don't put any anything there that is from some restart but if you want to save something there it's up to you and now everything that we're going to do is going to be safe in this file and see that there is this A here. When you have this A here, it means that you are accumulating everything. So to stress that everything that we're going to do is going to be safe in this file. So see that it's automatically all the files, all your output files will be created in the directory from which you launch our uh, file. So see that you have it here. Okay, so now it's an empty file. Okay, but as you keep running, you're going to add information there. Okay, so let's do the same. So for instance, if I go alpha zero, so see that it's giving me problem. Why? Because I'm using a previous solution. It was the solution 25 degrees. It was, was, wasn't a good, a good one. So exclamation point, it still is not converging. So see that it's not a good idea to start from very different solutions. So also be careful when doing this. In it, you initialize, 
And now, alpha zero, you have a converged solution. But if I open here, see that now you have that solution here. So everything that you are doing, okay, is being saved here. Okay, so you save it there. So now if I run alpha two, you run for two, so you open here, you have it there, and you go alpha minus two will be the same. You have it there. So be careful. You see that we I, I went from two to minus two. It's not a good idea. It's always a good idea to do it in a progressive way. Alpha minus four, alpha minus six. And if I go now alpha one, maybe we'll have problems. I don't know. So see, it showed me some stuff there. But see that everything that you do, you keep here. And then you have this file. You can plot it using your favorite plotting source. So it can be Python, MATLAB, Nuplot, or, or Excel. Okay, it's not a problem. It's up to you. And you have your information there. So this is this is it. So just to show you another uh, some other options about polar accumulation model. So always go here and see that you have this p list. It, it's going to show you the polars that you have stored. p delts you want to store a specific one. p sort just to sort that polar. So see that we run this one. It's not in order. So we can sort this one in decreasing from decrease from this from a smaller to larger alpha or CL and so on. Okay, so if I type p list, see that you have polar one, you can have multiple polars. So to save another polar, you need to go out of polar accumulation mode and then open a new one. Okay, to go out, just type PACC. So remember that enable, disable. So you have it PACC. Okay, we need, I think I need, need to go out, but that will enable this. Okay, here toggle. Okay, you can toggle, enable, disable. So for instance, let me use PSOR, choose the number, okay, in this case we have one, one polar, you can have two, three, so I want to sort polar one, and then if I type P list, see that now, everything in order, it doesn't order this one, so you need to override it, but, okay, so again, let's see more options, so for instance, you have this option, P write, I think we have it here, okay, see that you can write the store polar, so you can type P W right. So remember that when we enable the polar accumulation mode, we also say save it here. But you can say do not save it in the file. You can save that file afterward. Okay, not necessarily you need to enable that. So now you go this, and then I will call it uh, okay the same file. Okay, you it will overwrite. Yes, and now as you go here. See that now you have the file in the right order okay so easy peasy so the other thing that i want to show you that also you can do the uh the sequence of alpha or cl whatever so let me switch off polar accumulation mode okay p a c c switch off see that you have the a there you disable this and at this point i can change the random number so now i will go to five million and enter again in polar accumulation mode. And now I'm going to have another polar. See, polar two. P list, and see that we have two polars. We have the previous, whoops. I gave the, the file, save in the file, okay, uh, my mistake. P list, and see that you have the previous polar and the second one. And again, you can save order polars. You just need to check, it, will, it, it is going to ask you which polar do you want to erase, save, uh, or whatever. Okay, so let me run the sequence. So. Remember always in it, okay? And now I go alpha zero. You have a solution alpha zero, and I can go alpha sequence. Remember alpha sequence is you go from minus six. It's, it's going to start from minus six using what you have in zero. So maybe it's not a good idea. Let's see what happens. 25 steps of one. So yeah, it's running okay. But when you are running this sequence and you see that you are having problems in some cases, remember that you can do it manually, okay? So you will pick up those specific cases that didn't work and then run it manually, small changes from a case that you, you know that works. Usually alpha zero works and then from there you change small angles until re you reach that value, okay? To know the, the cases that didn't work, you go again, p list 
And the cases that are not saved here are the cases that didn't work. So in this case, all cases work. Okay, we have no problem. All cases work it. See that I have initialization my first case, and then from here it went to minus six, minus five, and probably have here zero repeated. So you can erase one. So for instance, if you want to erase one value, okay, you can save it in the text file and then manually erase it. There is no problem. But also you have here the option that you can remove points. See here, PRN. So you can erase a polar or you can erase a single point. Erase a polar, you erase everything. Now I'm going to erase a single po point. Sasuke, which polar do you want to modify? I want to modify polar two. And what alpha do you want to erase? So I want to erase alpha zero. There are two, but it will erase the first one. Put zero, please, and see that it raises the first one, and then you have the second one, and so on. Okay, so now see that you have this data. You can save this data. We saw that in PRI, but also we can plot this data, okay, to have something similar to what we have here. Okay, these plots, you can have all these, these plots there. So help, as usual, you have here pplot, plot a store polar okay so people are, and remember we have two polars okay so you go p list so you might have the option to plot a single polar or plot everything or a group of, of polars so if i type p plot and i don't give any option it would plot everything so see that is plotting the two cases that i have okay two different reynolds number from 1 million 5 million okay so here we run just of different ne negative values. So see that you have it here. So see that you have drag coefficient here, leaf curve here, okay? Sorry, this is leaf drag coefficient. This is the polar leaf curve here, in function of, of alpha. Then here, this is difficult to read. Here, this one corresponds to the moment coefficient. So in this scale, it's not very, very easy to read, but this is moment coefficient. And this is the transition point. Okay, you have it here. So you can visualize that. Okay, so you can plot, use this to plot your data, but I find that it's better to have your own, your own plots. Okay, so you can save this one, for instance, use, use Excel or Python, Mac, like it's up to you. So these are the basic steps. Okay, so uh, I would stop this video. Okay, so basically this is what you need to, to do for for, for your homework, okay? So in the next video, we'll show you now how to read an, an external file. So thank you for your attention. See you in the next videos. Bye.